Am I sharing? Yes, you are. Okay, great. Hi, my name is Stephanie Hong. I work at Johns Hopkins in Dr. Schutz's lab, and I've also been working in uh, N3C data ingestion and harmonization work stream for the last three years. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, how we augmented the National COVID Cohort Collaborative data set with CMS data in a secure and de-identified manner. So National COVID Cohort Collaborative, um, what we call it the N3C Data Enclave, is the largest centralized repository of COVID-related patient EHR data in the United States, and it's available to researchers in the OMAP CDM format. And I believe it is the largest OMAP instance to our knowledge to date. Um, CMS claims files are also transformed into OMAP CDM format and using privacy preserving record linkage uh, technology, we're able to link patients in N3C data with patients in CMS data. And as a result, N3C EHR data set in OMAP CDM format are enriched with additional CMS claims data set. So in N3C, we have uh, about tw plus 28 billion rows of data. And in um, CMS, we have 800 million rows of data. We are only able to provide um, CMS data for those sites who opt in to link. So although there's more data, we could only uh, provide uh, the sites who opted to link with CMS. So we are putting back the patient's data together again into, uh, uh, with CMS data as well as mortality and viral variant data. Um, CMS claims files were uh, sent to us in a proprietary format uh, by Acumen, and we examined each claims files for a standard terminology and coding system that are present for each patient, and um, we processed those files um, by transforming all of those codes into OMAP concept IDs, and then um, and then uh, putting the, all the data into OMAP domains accordingly, uh, according to the OMAP uh, domain ID. So some claims uh, files were over 4,000 columns wide, and some of the codes were spread across from anywhere from one to 45 columns. And sometimes it was possible uh, that a claim could uh, spread across multiple rows with a sequence number because they weren't able to uh, fill in all the codes within the 45 column uh, span. So we um, pivoted all of those columns into code and co-system, um, preserving the provenance of the data. And we transform all those codes um, by translating them uh, into OMAP concept ID, and that's what we use to uh, uh, load to OMAP CDM. Um, so each claim had uh, dates, uh, admitted, admitted dates, discharge date, uh, prescription, prescribed date. So those dates were used to uh, create the visits. And a revenue center that were um, present in the claim were referenced to create the visit types like emergency room to inpatient. Um, and if it was outpatient claims, it would be uh, outpatient visit type. Uh, if it was a long-term or skilled nursing claims, then it was non-hospital, uh, non-institutional um, uh, facility uh, visit types. And N3C, EHR, OMAP, CDM, and the CMS, uh, OMAP, CDM data are linked by PPRL patient ID. So uh, you are able to reference both the EHR and claims data 
for the same patient. There were in cases where N3C person ID was represented in a number of different sites. Um, and for those cases, we uh, dedupe uh, those person ID by providing a global uh, person ID. Um, so there were uh, over 250 transform steps within the data pipeline. We had um, various different data checks that we performed within the data set. There's 82 DTAs in N3C, but each DTA could be uh, aggregate of number of different healthcare centers. So uh, although there's 82 uh, data transfer agreements, it's essentially more than 230 plus uh, medical center sites data. Um, 30 sites agreed to, uh, actually 30 sites performed the PPRL, but only 22 sites agreed to opt in to CMS data. Um, and this is just a picture of our uh, data uh, transform steps. So among the PPRL linked patient, in average, we were able to see additional concepts per patient. So in condition, there were average about 78 uh, concepts, additional concept in procedure, about six additional concept. Drug exposure was about 22 uh, uh, additional concept. We think that was uh, some situation th that we are missed. So we are investigating further. We think that this number is fairly low, but it should be more than this. Um, the measurement uh, had about 16 more additional concepts and observation um, in Medicare for about 67% of the patient had about eight additional concepts. And then for 47 of the patient in device domain, there were about six additional concepts. And those were in Medicare and Medicaid condition. Uh, we saw 33 uh, additional concept per, uh, per link patient. Um, and then in procedure for about 22 um, PPRL link patient had 23 additional concepts and drug exposure for 22% of the patient um, the PPRL link patient, we saw 20, about 20 additional concepts. And in measurement, although we didn't have a results for measurement, we do have uh, of a record of uh, getting various different measurements recorded in the claims. And for about 17% um, PPRL link patient, we saw 17 additional concepts recorded. Um, and in observation, for 18% of the PPRL link patient, we saw six additional concepts. And in device, 13% uh, of the PPRL link patient had about six additional concepts present. And I just wanted to say thank you to my Odyssey mentors. Um, I was new to um, this Odyssey journey about three years ago, and there were many people who answered my questions all um, during the day and the nights. So I want to say thank you to them. Um, and then again, these are the people who worked on this work. And uh, the bottom shows it, people who worked on N3C. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, great, uh, great presentation. Uh, I'm going to open it up again to questions. Uh, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, it's amazing work. And so I know that, um, and I, thought it might have been the N3C group that uh, had published some comparative data about the missed diagnoses or missed data elements that um, in for at least certain COVID situations that claims actually proved to be more accurate um, or identified um, potentially things that were missing from the EHR, which is quite counterintuitive from everything we've always been saying about the quality of EHR data. Um, those are pretty remarkable numbers. I mean, like 78 conditions or 100 conditions per patient. 
that were added. And I'm wondering if you had any initial feelings about the the not the validity, um, but the um, the value of those additional um, you know items that were missed. So, for example, you know if something you maybe had. Um, you know, gram negative septicemia was in the EHR, but there wasn't a, a appropriate ICD code. So it came out as just septicemia. So you added septicemia, but you already had gram negative septicemia in there. So were these useful additions yet? Or I'm sure there's a whole lot of studies that are going to come out later about it, but I would love some initial reactions to what was added. Uh, so, yes. We are still uh, digging deeper into uh, types of information that we're seeing through claims. Um, uh, for drug concept, an OMAB uh, provides specific concept, whether even though the um, ingredient is same, you get different concept ID. So we're thinking of going deeper into actually looking at the ingredient level to make sure, you know, metformin 100 milligrams versus metformin 500 milligrams is really the same thing. So um, uh, those kind of situation is present. And so you do have to do a little deeper analysis to make sure it's uh, additional data. And then there are cases where, um, so Paxlovid uh, medication you could take now, I, I believe CMS provided, if you had C Medicare or Medicaid, you could um, get those even with just positive tests. You didn't have to go to see your doctor and get the prescription. So we potentially see all those data coming out through CMS um, as well. But yes, we do have to, um, we are currently looking deeper into counting uh, various different data at the, you know, not just as a concept ID level, but at a ingredient level and such. Yeah. It'd be really interesting just to rerun the cohorts um, and see what the difference in the cohorts were, because did it actually propagate to a inclusion or an exclusion of a patient into a cohort? And then validate whether that was an appropriate inclusion <laughs> of the patient, because that's the kind of the real world uh, information we'd want to know is this to really add value to the cohorting. Right. So, excellent, um, incredible work. We invite all of the researchers out there to, um, to uh, this data is free for research. So anyone who wants to do further studies like that, uh, we welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, I, I know there are some people that don't get the chat. So Andrew kind of, what, what Stephanie just said about being free mentions in the chat. Uh, this is a unique data resource with massive multi-site representation of EHR data and linked Medicare and Medicaid claims, all very carefully documented and free for anyone to use. So, uh, you know, a, a great effort for anybody, everybody in N3C who, who contributed to this work. Uh, 